Uh, today, it's a movie about uh, a box of light. Um, here where I live, uh, in New Mexico, they have traditions, and they probably have traditions in um, other places. I noticed um, when I was growing up that people started doing things like... Um, candle vigil walks and stuff like that. Jewish people where I lived also had the, their uh, candelabra, the women up menorahs that lit up as the days of Hanukkah went by in their windows and that was kind of curious and fun to look at. And then um, certain other religious groups had walks that went through the streets of course, I grew up during the time of um, freedom marches and civil revolutions in the 60s. So there are many different uh, efforts. Um, but the one thing that I did recognize is there is um, discontinuity and gift giving. And um, children, even myself, um, were jealous of the different types of gift giving days. Um, some people who were Jewish participated in all the holidays, and they got a gift on every day of Hanukkah, which was like 12 gifts, I believe. And then they, they did the advent of the Christian world, which is 12 days. And then they did the, the Christmas, and then they did the New Year. Now, of course, you had to have enough money to provide those gifts, one thought in your mind. But over the years... And even back then, gifts um, were efforts um, that I made sometimes uh, just to be nice um, and give someone something. Um, I made a Halloween light this year for the apartment complex that I live in just so they could seat in the window kids and on their trick-or-treat night. And I actually displayed it and I thought that was kind of nice. Um, I took a couple of photographs and it worked out. It was just a, um, a charrette idea that I got from being um, sitting in a, uh, in a Krispy Kreme donut shop of all places. I looked at the, uh, the cup and it looked like a face, the cup top. And I thought, well, I have an extra piece of plexiglass at home. And if I put this face in the plexiglass and the light behind it and on a block, it could stand as a pumpkin lantern. And it worked out. Now, I didn't expect to feel um, all too creative again. Uh, the next time I went to see if um, it was worth making a YouTube for kids to make, they had changed it the top of the of the coffee cup to a red cap. So I decided not to make a YouTube because it's frustrating for a child to to um, to see something and not be able to do that. Um, and uh, there was not another cap. And uh, the cap was kind of unique to that place. Of course I know what the cap is, but um, just kind of unique. Um, I suppose you could use other caps, but it had the little circles on it, so it looked like eyes, where you push for sugar or milk. You know, I've been like, uh, I'm far and distant from those days, and most people are. Um, but uh, when I was growing up, uh, I worked in different places where you'd have to make orders of um, lots of people uh, morning coffee, or break coffee if you worked on a job site or in a, in a, um, in a place where you had uh, union rules. Um, unions required you to go on break. And uh, coffee was, or tea, was cheap enough at the time. It was like 25 cents or 15 cents for, for a tea and 25 cents for coffee. And... Um, you make a list with sugar and milk for the different people, coffee or tea, 
Oh, it was like uh, letters. C for coffee, T, T for tea, uh, M for milk, and C for cream, S for sugar, XS for extra sugar, or X, C for extra cream, or XM for extra milk. And um, it was just this big list, and names weren't on it. Um, and uh, you would hand a list to the person at the counter, and they would use the list to make the coffees and put it in a box or a crate. They didn't have those crates that they have now. Um, that was something that came in in the 70s, um, maybe even the 80s. Uh, they would use uh, um, like, uh, um, canned goods boxes, which was a half box, um, and they would have lots of them um, behind the counter, and they they'd give it to you, and all the coffees would fit in it, and it was stiff enough to carry them back to where you worked. And um, I never really moved up in the job world, so I always had that offensive position. But you know, um, you don't need to always call it offensive. I mean, you could just call it a a job. Um, but some jobs, I had a girlfriend who had to do that when we were jobs after college, and it became offensive to her where the little markings on the paper that they were required to make didn't get fulfilled by the cafe properly and they screamed at her about it and uh, she became offended and then they fired her some point of time after that um, it was a sad, sad uh, state of affairs um, those days have somewhat changed um, Unions have become less and less prevalent in our lives. But the coffee cups still have um, markings on them now. Um, back then they used a magic marker on a flat cap. Um, originally the caps didn't have an opening. Um, you just take the cap off and you drink some and put it back. Um, and originally they didn't even have a vent. But then they invented the vent. Um, originally the vent was a pencil um, that the uh, coffee maker popped in the top for you. And then they made a vent in the process of making the cup top. And then um, they added marker or pencil um, to correlate your list to the coffee. I guess that was always in the beginning, the pencil or pen, because um, there was no way to figure it out. Sometimes they forgot it and people would taste it, and, and that became a, an absurdity. Um, so sometimes the person that went out for the coffee had to bring a pen with them and as they served it up um, they would be told what it was and they would mark it on top. So um, it, it, uh, it was quite a job. Um, uh, but uh, the resulting condition was uh, evolving civil rights and equal opportunity became a product production. Vents and pull-open parts made sipping areas, or dripping areas, probably more are accurate. Um, and uh, those were pull-offs. And then, um, then they made the, uh, the opening part a um, clip-on and then they have these little buttons on it for um, milk and sugar. And so you could push down the button and it would have milk and push down the button and have sugar. And those are the circles. So um, anyway, I, um, I cut off the, uh, the opening and made that the mouth and uh, made the eyes the circles. And it's just a simple um, fluorescent orange painted cap on a yellow um, uh, plexiglass um, that I glued on with Elmer's glue. And uh, it was very simple and child safe. And I had a piece of styrofoam that uh, uses the base. And um, I had a couple pieces and I glued them together and I cut a hole in the center for a weight. I took some sand 
and I poured the sand in and put glue in the sand so it would stick to it. And it, and it, and it worked and it just sat in there and then I painted it black. And I took a little knife or scissors, if you didn't have knives, and cut the slot into the uh, foam, it's foam plastic, to drop the, uh, the plexiglass in. And uh, it worked. I found after a couple of weeks in the heat of the oncoming winter that the plexiglass was a little heavier than the foam plastic. And so I took some pens and um, pressed them into the foam plastic and bent over the tops. They call them uh, coating pens. They have a little plastic head on the top, but you could use any kind of pen. And I bent it over and pressed it against the plexiglass and they became stanchions. Um, Preventing it from uh, bending over. Of course, you could go to the expense of buying a wood block and drop it in, kind of like you know those things you see in the variety gift store. But I designed it just for kids to make in, in art class. Um, so I thought that the red cap was kind of cool back in October. And um, I didn't think much of it. And then um, I was sitting there um, watching the internet on a new um, uh, internet site that I had found, a Bibliotheca um, France. Uh, and I was watching some movies that they had put on it. They have free internet at the cafe or the donut shop. And um, it was some movies from uh, the time of Charlie Chaplin. And uh, there was a, um, a French person, similar to um, Charlie Chaplin, who had taken images rather than movies. I don't know if it was, someone else had made a movie of his images. And I was sitting there watching. And I was thinking, how fun that, that was to watch. But uh, included the, the gravity of poverty that seems to have not really like impacted people of the, uh, the free buck created during the, uh, the Bush and Grad War Movement times. Um, now, of course, I remained poor throughout it as they abused and used me to make all the buildings in their countries of war, being a licensed architect, and never paid. It's kind of like forced um, a draft, and all the lawsuits I attempted ended in them just trying to kill me. So the irony of them um, serving a country for the benefit of other people's humanity was uh, an immense as they attacked me um, without payment. And they ran around in their Ferraris as they do today, and their um, um, as the company and. Scotland that they like called McLarens that are a minimum two million dollars a piece. Um, they, out here in New Mexico they have these gigantic buses that they drive around in and their homes are gigantic and they have gigantic garages to put their buses in. And these are the people that supposedly serve our nation. In any case, um, amongst the area there's a lot of poor still and um, police that like to pull over and harass the poor. And then there's the people who are indigent that are busting from New York and Vegas um, to create um, the facade of, um, of a uh, Christian uh, soup kitchen society, uh, which seem to be funded by something. And they, and they bust in all these people that, that these other areas don't want in their city and they roam the cities till they die, uh, especially in the cold moments, the final moments of their lives, when they no longer can walk the streets. And the irony is just incredible. Um, the, the people that serve the nation, another nation, and have McLarens, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, at the minimum Corvettes, Raring and roaring up and down the hills. They like the Charger and the Challenger too. And they have such grand funds that they actually paint 
images of like jaws and things on their sports numbers. Um, they, they have all these like added value paint shops that they spend exotic amounts of money at. And then you see the, the bums walking down the street. And then you see blood spilt in this great uh, line where um, one, of the, one of the vagrants have a knife and have cut the jugular of a person going home at night. Wow. And then you see the roaring car drive by. And it says on the back of their license plate, I serve veteran." And sometimes they have little stickers with, with the, the name of their, their grupa, where they went to another country and helped the people there. So it, it leaves you wondering. And so I had this um, other coffee late in November, a couple of weeks ago. No, it's just a week ago. And um, I thought, well, Maybe I could, I bought this little cup full of tiny donuts for a dollar, and it had a glassine top. And if I took the coffee cup and put the red cup tap inside the glassine, I would create this effect of a Christmas look, or a, a frosty look, much better for the, for the, uh, the different uh, viewpoints of the nation. Frosty sort of um, transcends all the different uh, gift conditions and speaks about the cold and the depravity of it. Uh, of course, Santa shows up in the Frosty, but um, doesn't need to. And there's no religion really spoken in it, so it seems to speak a lot about it. So the snowman came to mind. And the concept of the luminary, where we started this discussion, of people walking around um, in the cold and trying to join hands and, and talk. Or sometimes people put them on their property. They have these brown bags with candles that they put out. It seems very volatile and fire, but now they have these plastic bags with um, uh, battery operated lights. All this led me to the concept of maybe making a night light out of the, uh, the cup and make my second Krispy Kreme child craft uh, art project. Last year I made this postcard in celebration of the 24th moon which is the unseen moon. It's the, the new moon, the final moon of December that you don't see and this is a a postulation that there was actually a new um, gift-giving group, um, a rabbit and a coyote, being drawn by a snake and a tarantula in the southwest, where possibly the high mountains um, have a dark side of the moon, where on the 24th moon, where the moon is dark, the moon is light, and only they like a Santa's um, uh, workshop. This is the Southwest workshop. And there they are on the top, their workshops, and now they're coming down with the gifts ready to um, go through the web and give their gifts. The web of the tarantula, that is, and the snake. Um, the big rubber tire is going to drive along on it. And you see, I, I made one of these RTVs that I hand custom made um, with a big gift theory in the back. And the rabbit is directing them. It has a big, nice clip on plastic screen or to print the, the rocks and snake spit from hitting them. And the coyotes on top to throw the, the gifts as they go through the web. And that's their neon sign on the dark side of the moon, 24th moon. And the moon, of course, is bright on that side because it's on the other side. And of course people think reptiles and animals are on the other side of life. And uh, 
prickly bushes like cactuses. And those are the colors on the other side of the leaf. So with that, I, I made a, uh, I made a poem, and uh, I'll read the poem as you look at it, and think of this box of light as possibly a solution to one of the gifts in the back of the, of the court. Where the new moon is visible, gifts are created, serpents, arachnida, and animals join in the effort without, cont without contest. All year from the first moon to the twenty-third moon, gifts are created and dreamed up by the rabbit's listening ears and the coyote's dream catch it hat. On the twenty-fourth new moon, hidden in its darkness to us and light to them, the cart sets out by rattle and web. The tarantula's web weaves a dream catcher's highway to all the people of the world. The rattler glides along on it, rattling harmony with the tarantula. The rabbit and coyote ride hitched to them in a buggy of all weather and terrain rolling on the web and ground in equal harmony. A coyote tosses the gifts into the doors and windows of the dreamers' homes by the rabbit's waving ears and listening ears. So that's the poem, kind of like, you know, um, Frosty. And this year I made a gift for it. It's the dark sky. Um, it's a golden bottom, like a Japanese or Chinese uh, uh, vessel box. I, I didn't intend that, but it, it came to mind. I studied this in design school. The... Uh, Chinese painting, Japanese painting, and how brushwork can create a quick set uh, image. Of course, they, this painting didn't take longer than five minutes. Um, and now it lasts a lifetime. It took like a week to dry, and I bought this, uh, I was struggling to find a container, and I finally went to something place called Hobby Lobby, which had craft um, crates, and this was a craft cylinder, a little bit higher. And I measured it inside, put some rubber in there to hold the luminary on the bottom and top, and then cut it down. With the cuttings, I made these little edges in here to hold the top stiffly in place. It was loose. Um, and I used some super glue, and the super glue kind of like, I got a cold after I finished this. It lasted for like a week. Heavy mucus and coughing. But here it's almost gone, and now I'm making the YouTube. Um, I used uh, just basic uh, acrylic paint. Um, the black gloss, I, I guess you got I got that at Lowe's or Home Depot um, near Rustoleum, um, and it's acrylic. It has a little heavy scent to it, but um, it dried after a couple of days. Um, uh, there are probably some better paints they dry quicker, but but this gave it a nice sheen like that. And then I just used the acrylic um, water solvent paint to paint over it. This is just mixed acrylic. These are mixed colors. But I'm just using white. I got the paints at Hobby Lobby. Um, they have uh, the primary colors, which I use. Um, uh, red, yellow, and blue, and white. And uh, which is not a color, but white. And then they have metallic colors, silver and gold, and I use those. Um, so I did the white, and I added the silver dots and, and things, and some gold um, in the gold bottom. And it comes out nice. Um, you can see it's golden. So now we're ready to to go ahead and open up and uh, and let you see. Um, like I said, the uh, the top is is a bit uh, stiff, so um, it will take a second to open. But that's the point, um, so that when you store it, it uh, it doesn't let anything in. So there's the top. I'm going to push on the, on the edges just to get the little 
tightness off of it. And there it is, it's coming off. Um, probably though, over time there'll be some decay and, and chipping of the cheap paint, but uh, and there's some already. But, but this um, rubber piece is the insert that I put in there to prevent the uh, the top of the luminary from being damaged. And it has some glue still, I guess, gluey from my I took um, some flooring uh, foam that I bought at uh, Lowe's. You can also buy it at any place. It's just that uh, child like safe foam um, flooring. You can buy one or it's kind of expensive, like five dollars a piece for a two by two, but um, but I had some scrap, so I, I cut it into these shapes. Um, as you can see, some of the blue came off um, in the heat and cooling of the, the apartment and sitting there. Well, you can see um, I left a little space there um, to take the batteries out for storage or to add some batteries. Um, If you wanted to sell it to someone, you could you could sell them with extra batteries, um, and so that just sits in there, and, and it helps to lock it to see the, the battery slide into the slot. You don't need to use them, but um, I added that because a lot of gifts don't come with batteries, and so you could do that, and I made a space for it. So now, the moment is here. You can see the top. There's the moon. I made it so that the top of the snowy mountain and this, these are constellations, um, slides in over the biggest mountain. But when the cap is off, it, it, it appears to read all by itself in the night sky. Uh, these are the snowmen around the world, luminaries in the darkness of the sky, trying to promote happiness and good things. And there's Santa. I don't know why. I include Santa because everyone, you know, it's kind of a, it could be the rabbit. See, there's nothing really like, um, it's got the little nose, so it could be Mr. Rabbit. You see the green eyes. Here it comes. And you can see, um, well, maybe you can't see, but I. There's the luminary. Um, that's the cup of coffee. And that's the red cat. And uh, that's the, the top from the, the donuts. And that's it going on. And that's it. The light's going off. And then um, you can see it's really kind of cute. And um, in the darkness of the night this has an aura of red. Um, the original light in the in the, the light case which is just a headlamp for a, I bought at um, I got for free actually at uh, Harbor Freight. But it's a cheap one. It costs three dollars normally. Um, it's one of those headpiece lights they, they say you use for headlight or for projects that you uh, stretch onto your head. I cut off the stretchers and left on the, the hinge. So this is the hinge that comes with them. If you wanted, you could attach a magnet and you could stick it to something. But I didn't include the magnet. It's, it's, it's too much work. I had to glue a piece of that foam rubber here to um, keep the hinge from making the luminary um, be on an angle, no it's straight. For some reason the, uh, the hinge doesn't 
level out, so I, I made it so it it stops. I'll put a stop in there. It's just a piece of this um, foam cut and glued to the bottom. So now you see um, the cap and the, the mountain. And uh, the snowmen in the mountain. So the gift box is a gift itself, and uh, and there's the moon and the constellations. And I add a little silver to to the, uh, the white, just by little dipping the, the paintbrush into it to make it shine a little bit in the light. And it does, and you see, catches the camera. Now I'm going to turn the light back on, and we're going to just go over a little bit how the, uh, the luminary is made. As you can see, you could carry this around at night, and um, you could bring the box with you if you wanted. Um, so at the moment, uh, the ritual opening it. Um, could take place. Uh, you could put all the boxes on a table and then there would be like a, a two types of artwork that people see. Uh, or maybe you're like walking around with a cart with with all the kids, the kids with a little red cart or something. Um, car with all the boxes in it. And then in there. Um, out here it's mostly dry. So you could leave the box out behind the luminary. Some people put it on a, a little low wall that they that they have, and they could have tons of them. And little, you could paint different images if you wanted behind the luminary, and the luminary could light the artwork on the people's walk. Or you could leave it at home and, uh, and just walk with the luminary. Now, I've already tested this two nights. So it's done 24 hours on this battery set and uh, LED and it's going strong. So it's a nice setup. I have to admit though, I did burn out the original bulb that came with the, uh, the setup. And um, I bought an LED um, from an electronics store um, and put it in um, to it. And it was a very simple um, changeover. The, uh, the bulb that was in there had two long uh, wire legs that were stuck into two springs. Um, and uh, I pulled that out and I was going to buy a new one and then I thought, well, this is 12 volt and I have a 12 volt. Well, this is 6 volt and I have a 12 volt bulb. Sometimes a lower voltage will work for a lower voltage battery will work for a lot higher voltage bulb. It just won't burn as bright. So I pulled out a 12 volt LED white and uh, I tested it and it worked. So it was really just simple as just the same, um, placing it in the, uh, in the same position and uh, resetting it. Uh, it was just like buying the bulb at a store, but um, the benefit was that the, the other bulb was much brighter and, and drained the batteries more and, and uh, shone like a flashlight to the top, which was nice, the red light came through. But um, it burned out. Um, it was like uh, one of those high intensity uh, flashlights, that uh, pen lights that you get where they had an extra bulb in the back and a spring. Um, and these burn out quick too. But this, so I just put the LED in and, uh, and it's burning a lower brightness but a kind of a blue haze, kind of like snow. And so it, uh, it, it worked out. Um, now you can see when the light's on, you can see the the aura of the painted shape of the uh, of the snow person. This is a female one, and this is a male one, and that's the uh, Santa Claus. Um, I had to take the lettering off of the uh, of the cup that uh, said it was. Um, a, uh, a um, 
Krispy Kreme coffee and it had all the nutritional facts and stuff like that. I had some um, some mineral spirits that I bought at uh, at the hardware store and uh, I guess I got it at uh, a Walmart. It's a little like potent in its smell, but it's but it's um, it's here it is. Uh, mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits. Still has a smell, but um, I just put it off on a, a paper towel, and uh, I wiped it on the whole area that I wanted to wipe off. I kept the green bar. Um, I, I obviously hit a little bit of the green bar, but you know that's not a big deal. It's, hit a few spots and, and keep a few spots. So you can sort of see the haze. Well, you can't in the light. But in, in, the, in reality, I can see a little bit of haze of the, of the original writing. But um, in the camera, you can't. And, and when it's on, you can't. Uh, but if I look really close, there's a haze there um, of, uh, in the bright light of what used to be there. But So I didn't do a perfect job, but, um, but I did enough of a job so that... Uh, it's not really reading, and uh, and my cup is reading his Santa Claus. It took about ten minutes. Um, first, you wipe it on there, let it sit for a minute, and then with a little pressure, you have to stick your hand inside and hold against the cup so you don't like, crack the cup, and uh, and you rub against it with the with the paper towel, and it comes off. About ten minutes um, uh, it takes to get it to a point where it's hardly readable. And then you wash it with soapy water to take the smell away or whatever residue is there so you can take the paint. And um, I took out some white paint and uh, drew some circles. Um, but uh, I also had some Sharpie pens. Um, and that's what those black the black is. And I think, um, to tell you the truth, I drew the eyes first. And uh, then the the carrot nose, and to do a carrot nose, so it looks like it's uh, foreshortening, you just draw an arc, and then the triangle edges, and it arcs in between, and a rounded front. Uh, you, you, the front is usually a circle, and then it looks foreshortened. Um, foreshortening means that it, you know, it's coming at you. Um, that's not perfect, but uh, it still looks like it's coming at you. Um, you know, pointing down a little bit but sticking out of the snow um, then I made a little like ovals as if I had taken some rocks off the ground stuck it in the snow to make the mouth um, and then uh, mittens for its arms sometimes kids put mittens on there in between the uh, the two round balls sometimes people put three round balls but I put two round balls, um, and then they sometimes put black stones for their shoes, um, and big stone for their, their belly button or their belt. Um, after that was done, I liked the way it was looking, and I decided to paint the white around it um, with a paintbrush, and made the circles. Now, um, when the light is off, you actually don't see the painted part, and uh, and all you see is kind of like the eyes and the, the nose and the arms. The arms are highlighted with the sharpie, and the feet, and it still looks like snowman because it's a white cup. Ah. I also took the sharpie and uh, painted the top part of the cup black, so that's kind of like the hat of uh, of Frosty. So then, once that's done, that could have been enough, and you could have just stuck a flashlight underneath and, and be done, right? I wanted to put the red cap on and seal it, so in order to do that, um, the red cap didn't exactly fit on, on the cup for the donuts, because it's a little bit smaller than the coffee cup top. So I took some scissors and trimmed the top of it, just so... 
the turned edge disappeared and I just have the top rim that sits on the rim of the cup. As you can see it didn't fit perfectly but almost perfectly. And so, you know, I, like a kid or, or an adult working with a kid, you know, you don't have to like fret over that, you don't have to be perfect. You just cut off the, the downside and drop it on top and it fits. And um, the idea is you have to leave some lip and you want to like seal it because um, the, you don't want the light to come, the white light to come through it. You want this to catch the light and uh, become red. And then you drop this on top and it slips on perfectly and it holds the red against the cup uh, just by its nature and it doesn't move. It's stuck on there. Now you've got a red top in a clear space and it almost looks like Robocop but now it's it's got a rounded top like a like a snowman and so it's Robo Snowman. Um, it's frosty. Um, I uh, took that black magic marker and just sketched in uh, a Santa's hat and drew the uh, the circles for its eyes and a mouth below the the press out piece for the for the uh, um, the drinking spout. This one doesn't have the uh, the buttons for uh, milk and sugar on it. This is the new Hutamaki is called um, cup. Krispy Kreme has since the uh, um, November. And it's probably just a holiday top, but maybe it's a new one. I don't know. I, I worried about the the the, the 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 tongue or condition, or maybe that's the rabbit's nose. But I like it, and when it's done, it's it's it kind of is nice. It just it doesn't look perfect like a human face, but it could be the nose, it could be the mouth, um, and it kind of just works. And that's the mustache, the white, and the beard. And the beard comes over the top um, to get the, a person viewing it to see it. And then, you know, it's kind of funny. It almost looks like Frosty the Snow Policeman or something like that. Um, or the gift giver with his triangle, white triangle on the red cap, the black trim. So it has a nice effect. I didn't intend that, but it, it uh, worked out. Um, so then the actual attachment of light um, was uh, just a matter of taking some uh, rubber or plastic cement from a modeling kit that I had. Um, turning it over, placing the light cap, which um, naturally fit on the bottom. So it's just one of those headlamps that you, that you get with the, with the uh, see I, I, instead of just cutting the, uh, the headpiece off, I cut the uh, pliers, the, uh, with these kind of pliers, snippers wire snippers. I cut these edges off and then the, the elastic headband came off easily. On one side I trimmed it all down this side. There was the three edges. This one for the one side of the head and this, the other side of the head and this over the, over the top to create the little rim that you see um, in the store. So I trimmed this off all the way and left these two edges on um, to fit into the inside uh, cutaway foam that I have down there. It's just two pieces of foam on either side um, glued to the bottom and then the center area is the width of the, uh, the luminary's base. The width of that is the width down there. And so it just sits in there and it keeps it from um, moving around. And so you could actually send these gifts through the mail and it wouldn't get damaged. Um, this is very light, um, so there's no like weight to damage it. So I turned it upside down, placed this guy on top. Um, I set some glue 
before it's on the top head of the flashlight and that made it quickly set as you know or maybe don't know plastic cement modeling glue um, has a, a 30 second to 3 minute window of gluing time so all you need to do is put it on the top turn it over and place it on there and hold it in a straight position as best you can and uh, and uh, it glues in one to three minutes. Thirty seconds it's tack um, and, and you can see the glue setting. So you want to put it right on there. Then in the one to three minutes you turn it over and, and you check and see if it's holding in the center position and it's level. If it's not, push it around a little bit and it's tacky so it will hold and it's pushing it around. And you get it level like I've done or close to it and uh, it's actually not perfectly on center. You can see it's just slightly off, as you probably have some errors yourself. But it's sitting level enough that it's optically level. Um, it appears level. And uh, now it's done. I let it sit for three or four hours, and then I turned it over and took some glob, glob some more of the plastic cement to set it better um, in a seam around the edge. So it looks like a bead. They call that beading the edge. So I bead the edge with a, con a continuous seam of glue um, just to make like a, a filler. I fill the edge. And uh, let that sit overnight. I didn't push it around or anything. I just let it sit. Um, and uh, now it's set. Now what the beauty of this is is that in point of fact you help yourself create um, a permanent toy because now I can actually take out the luminary part and you can see the LED that I replaced it with and this is the reflector and uh, this is set in there nothing's, nothing's broken or anything so if the bulb goes out again you could you could replace it for yourself. You need to unscrew that and that the springs pop it up and, and you pull it out. Um, most parents and even some kids can probably do it. Um, this just sits back over the bowl and then because it's nicely glued on there reset it and uh, you've made yourself a little more. Oh, that's my initials. My Signature for EKQ from the design. You can put your own on there if you want. Um, to put the bladders in there, you, you pop this off. And there they are. Uh, this just came with it, so it clips on there like that. Press back on. And it's all set. Uh, turn that back down. And there's a luminary in there. Back on again. And uh, it's done. Amazing. Now, um, uh, I noticed that um, I wasn't attentive to when the tightness of this when I um, uh, when I glued it. So I had to like make it not perfectly tight and turn it back a little bit. But there it is. Um, I was pressing on that. So you could walk around and flash it if you want to. So, um, the 24th moon. Frosty. Illuminated. Total cost, um, well, I had the paints. So the only expense was to buy the coffee and the donut, which cost $3.20. Um, for the coffee, that was a large, so you can probably do it for two dollars and twenty cents. Um, and you could probably ask for the cup and the cap. Well, I don't. Um, and then uh, this cost five dollars at the uh, Hobby Lobby. Um, but if you had to buy the paints and um, you have to have white sharpies here. 
to get the package of Sharpies, a blue and a black and a red. Um, it costs like three dollars. So that would be three dollars. Um, and to get a small packet of paint costs another three dollars, which um, has all the colors in it. And it comes with a paintbrush, so um, so that's six dollars. And if you had to pay the three dollars and twenty cents for that, that would be nine dollars. So you're looking at fifteen dollars, twenty dollars to make one, and then <coughs> the multiples would be just the empty cup. So if you negotiated with them, you could probably buy a, a stack of the cups for a party to make. Um, and which come in like a you know, one of those typical uh, plastic things for 500 cups. So you could probably do it. Um, the initial amount uh, you could probably buy multiples of those for probably less than five dollars, but I don't know. Um, so the total cost for a kid would be in eight dollar range. Once you get the total paints, uh, the paints. Uh, but if a child and he's going to make one, and you're going to make one, it's going to be around fifteen to twenty dollars. Um, I think that's kind of expensive. But uh, on the other hand, you don't need to make the box. And um, this pen light, I forgot, is three dollars. So, so it is like twenty dollars. Um, uh, You probably have to buy the glue, so that was a dollar twenty-nine. This plastic cement to glue it together. Um, I also I wanted to done added a drop upside down to here and there, just so the mere chance that it's gonna pop off. I can't know. Um, so uh, a luminary with a box that lasts forever, twenty dollars. Um, Uh, a luminary without a lamp, if you use a flashlight, three dollars and twenty cents. Or maybe, maybe you could ask for it for free. Uh, and they might give it to you for free. Uh, and uh, then you need the, the paints. Um, some some cities have uh, paint uh, shops for community paint shops where you can do that. Uh, so. Uh, it can be anywhere from free to twenty dollars. Independently, for single twenty dollars, starting from scratch. Um, you don't need. You could use scissors to clip this, so um, you don't need all these great tools or anything um, to cut down this. Um, I used a, uh, a razor blade knife. Um, I don't know what equivalent you'd need, um, but you don't have to cut it down. Um, but I did significantly cut. I cut this much, that much down. Um, so um, you could ask them at the store to cut it down for you, knowing what it is. But I had to mark it. But you see it so um, in the video. Uh, you have that benefit. Um, well, ballpark, you probably, you know, would do that. And that's why the foam rubber is in there, so it, it takes up a little. It doesn't squish too much, but it perfectly fits um, like that. Almost a little, maybe a centimeter or three centimeters of airspace. Um, I guess I missed a couple of them of the residual issues but with the camera being on an angle. But what I was talking about is this distance here to that edge is how much I cut off that clip arm piece. And then I took some scissors and cut that piece from the cutoff to go on the side on either side opposite each other to make the hat stiff or the top stiff. So that's the uh, that's the project. And once again, when you turn the light off, 
That's a beautiful luminary. Uh, but it's very light. Two hands for a child can fit on it. You can carry it in front of the world. One hand from a, an adult. Two hands from an adult can fit on it too. See, it has two sides to it. Um, no sharp edges. You can even drop it. Um, of course, you don't put it on the bottom. You could drop it all over. The bottom, um, being glued to it, if you dropped it three feet, it might um, crack or something. Might not, though. Um, that's why I glued the top one. Um, so if you drop it, it it's a okay. The LED um, also um, makes it a okay to drop. Um, they don't generally break. What does an LED cost? I think it costs me five dollars for a pack of ten. So um, they're relatively cheap. That's cheaper than going to the bulb store and buying a new bulb, which probably costs three to five dollars. Um, which is kind of absurd. There are different um, ones of these um, that have different cost structures, and some of them come with an LED already in it. Um, so you can look at that issue if you want. Of course, you could just stick a flashlight underneath, and you could glue the flashlight on, and the flashlight could be the holding piece. Uh, so those are the experiments that uh, that you could do for yourself. This is what I came up with, and uh, I like it. And you could, of course, could make it yourself. And um, um, I created this holiday, the 24th moon, for people to join in in. If you uh, wanted another one, or uh, just needed one that didn't have religious um, overtones that you don't uh, have any desire to be involved in, um, this you know religious overtones. Religious means yeah, in Latin to be bound by something. Um, the common lore in the U.S. is to, is to mean some god-associated thing, and that's not really what it means. Um, the Constitution, it means to be bound by something, your group or people. You have the freedom to bind yourself to, to something. Uh, and not be told what to do. Uh, I know a lot of people go through these holidays and feel like they're being told by the shoppers and the, and the products they see visually and orally. So I made this um, for everyone to have something else. I sent it a postcard so it so it went through the, the mail and was seen by the computers of the nation. Well, that's it. And that's the, the visual and that's the luminary in its box.